Hey coders, and welcome to episode 4 of our Dart season on the Flutter course. In today's episode, we're going to be overviewing the topic of functions. So functions in Dart are similar to what you would expect in any programming language. They are defined blocks of code that execute specific tasks. And putting your code within functions makes it a lot more readable, a lot more reusable, and it just organizes your code into logical components such that you can debug a lot quicker. So I have written out an example function at the bottom of the screen, and let me overview its anatomy. So you'll start off just like with variables with the data type that that function is going to return. So in the, this example, I have a string right there because my function is returning hello world in quotes, which is a string. All right, then after the data type, you will just basically define whatever you want your function name to be. It can be anything uh, as long as it is alphanumeric and there's no spaces. Uh, and then after that, you have two round parentheses that are enclosing each other. And then after that, you have two curly brackets. And then whatever code you put within those curly brackets is what is going to be executed whenever you call this function right here, my function. So I think it's going to make a lot more sense if we jump on in over to the code and run a couple of these example functions. There are a couple different ways you can write a function based on what you want that function to do, but the simplest way is to write a function with no arguments or no parameters. So up here on line four through six, I have defined a function. I've called it say hello. That's the name of my function. And similar to variables with functions, you also want to specify the data type that that function is going to be returning. So as you can see, say hello is going to be returning a string. This is surrounded by quotes, so that makes it a string. So we're just going to specify, hey, this function right here is returning a string, and I, that's what I'm going to write at the beginning of my function. Now, unlike with variables, again, with variables, you are required to put the data type, but in Dart, functions, they're actually optional if you put the data type. So this would be totally fine. I'm not going to get any errors, but I would not, I wouldn't recommend doing this. It's good practice to always put the data type that that function is going to be returning. All right, so you'll, you, you'll say your function and then immediately follow that, you'll do your rounded parentheses and then everything that goes within the curly brackets after that is going to be what is executed. That, that's going to be your code block that is executed whenever you call this function right here, say hello. So down here on line eight, I am calling that function. I'm, I'm giving it the name of the function that I want to call. And then I'm and then immediately following that, I'm doing the two rounded parentheses. That's how to call your function. And then that's going to call a function. It's going to run this function. It's going to return hello world as a string. And then we're going to be printing that return value to the console. And if I run that, we should see that just as we would expect, hello world. All right, so by now we know enough to look at this main method a little bit more differently and analyze it a different, uh, differently, right? So this main method, again, we are specifying is this is just a function, right? We're specifying the return value. And again, because it's not returning anything, we're, we're saying it returns void, which means nothing. And then we are giving it the name of main followed by two rounded parentheses and then our curly brackets, which is what's going to be executed when this script is run. All right, let's keep moving on. So functions are a little bit more versatile than just uh, running, right? W running as, as many times as we can. We can also provide functions with additional data that it will then use to perform some calculation or some operation, right? And the way to do that those or those additional pieces of data are called parameters or sometimes they're known as arguments. The way to specify that, yes, this function expects some additional data is to put that those variables within the rounded parentheses in the function definition or the function declaration. So when we call this function triangle area, uh, this by the way, this function is going to be returning the area of some um, arbitrary uh, triangle, right? So when we call that function and we want to know the area of the triangle with base 52 and height 93, 
then it's going to take this number in the first position, 52, and assign it to this variable right here, base. And then that is going to be what is referred to uh, when it makes this area calculation right here. Again, the, the calculation for the area of a triangle is one half times base times height. So this 52 in the first spot is going to be associated with or assigned to this variable name base. And then 93 is going to be assigned to this variable name height. So let's just run that real quick. We can see that now we know that the triangle or the area of the triangle with base 52 and height 93 is 2418. And again, with these functions, you can add as many parameters as you want. All of them are going to be separated with com uh, commas. Or you could, again, have no arguments, which, again, is just there's nothing within the parentheses. All right, let's keep moving on. So this function, again, this both of these parameters right here, both of these arguments are now required. If I were to, say, get rid of them or only supply one value, one piece of data, then we are going to get an error uh, eventually, if I try to run this, say, um, there we go, it has error compiling. So we're going to get an error because we're only supplying one piece of data to this function right here. So we're, we're going to need to, uh, so both of these are required. But when you define a function, you can actually define some optional arguments. So let's get into that right now. So there's two types of optional arguments that you could uh, specify within your function. There are positional arguments and then also named arguments. So let's let's first look at positional arguments. So optional positional arguments are are the are specified by the position that you reference them, right? So uh, the way to do that to specify that you want some optional positional arguments are to surround whatever optional arguments that you want to put within your function within square brackets. So that's the notation for Dart. Uh, if you want optional positional arguments, you'll surround them in square brackets. So let's take a quick or a, a better look at this function right here, make purchase. So let's imagine that we are working for a retail company and it's our job as a software engineer to code what happens whenever a customer wants to make a purchase right on your online store, say. Well, Every single purchase is going to have some product associated with it, right? Like if you if you if you're going to purchase something, you're definitely going to be purchasing a, a a a product. So that's going to be required. Whenever you make a purchase, you're going to have to specify what product you are buying. But optionally, you may have a coupon, and optionally, you may want to be added to the newsletter, right? So we're going to specify that these are optional by putting square brackets around them. And then when we call this function make purchase, then since these are square brackets, that means that these are now positional arguments. So the first, the first position is going to be the product ID. And then the second position is going to now be the coupon code. Because again, the position of the data that we give our function is going to matter, right? So this is the second position. It's it's this is the first position. This is the second position. So that means this second position is going to be associated to this second position up here, coupon code. All right, let's just run that real quick. And there we go. So again, uh, we we had a coupon, right? This was our coupon code. So our coupon code was not blank. That's true. So we ran this line of code right here, discounting purchase, and that is what showed up on the console. All right, so again, with positional ar arguments, the position that you give your data matters in, when, in, what, uh, in, in which um, variables are being assigned to, right? Now, let's look at the second type of optional argument, and that is the named arguments. So with name, named arguments, but the position you give your data to your function doesn't matter, actually. So again, here's our first uh, required parameter right here, product ID. And again, this is a positional argument. So in the first position, we're going to say product ID. But now, again, we have some optional arguments. And to specify optionally named arguments, or optional named arguments, you surround them in curly brackets. So again, positional arguments are in square brackets. Uh, and, and then named arguments are in curly brackets. So the cool thing about named arguments is that the position 
of the data that you supply, your function doesn't matter, right? So again, we, we specified the product ID, but let's say that we didn't have a coupon code, but we did want to add somebody to the newsletter, right? Well, we could in the second position, just say add to newsletter and then colon, and then the value that we want to assign to this parameter right here. So we say add to newsletter is now true. And again, we're specifying that in the second position, but again, we're giving this, uh, this, this value right here, this argument, a name. So we're saying add to newsletter equals true. And if we run this, we should see that this line of code actually gets executed. There we go, adding customer to newsletter right there. All right, let's keep on moving on. So that's how to do named, optionally named arguments in Dart. So with optional arguments, you can actually give default values. What does that mean? Well, with default values, you're saying that if whoever is executing this function doesn't supply a value, then just automatically give it some default value, right? So right here, in this function right here, make purchase, we are giving the value add to newsletter a default of true, right? So if, if say the customer doesn't uh, specify if they wanna be added to the newsletter, we're just going to default them to true and they're going to have to opt out if they don't wanna be added to the newsletter, right? So right here we have a product ID. Uh, we're also specifying the coupon code just like that but we're not going to be specifying if they are going to be added to the newsletter. So it's going to take on this default value of true. And now if we run this, then we should get this line of code to print out and there we go, we do just like that. Now default values again can always be overridden. So if we say add to newsletter is now false when we call this function, then we won't get this line of code anymore and there we go, we don't anymore because now we are assigning add to newsletter is false. All right, the last type of function that I want to go over is Lambda functions. Again, you'll find Lambda functions in basically every single programming language. These, are, uh, these, these type of functions are just very, very simple functions. They're just one line of code, basically. So it's just a shorthand way of writing your function if it's a very simple function. So again, I am writing the triangle area function, but this time now as a lambda function. They're known as lambda functions. So again, you'll start off with the name of the function. You, you technically could write again. It's good practice to, in fact, write the data type that the function is going to return. But if you're trying to shorthand, you can just write the name of the function, any arguments, if at all. And then instead of writing curly brackets, you instead write the equal sign and then this angle bracket, which kind of looks like an arrow. And that's why it's also called, uh, or also known as arrow functions. So once you write this arrow, that's basically telling Dart, this is gonna be a Lambda function. So everything that comes after the arrow is, is something that I want you to return. So again, uh, you don't have to specify, or you don't have to write return. In fact, you'll get an error if you do. Um, that is implied by this uh, lambda function right here. So it's just going to return whatever comes next. And again, these have to be one line. You can't really move on to the next line and continue your, your lambda function. They all have to be on one line. But again, it's just a quick way to write a function. Uh, and that is to use the arrow and then uh, whatever you want to return in this function. So let me just run that just for completeness. We can see that the, uh, the area of a triangle 100 base and 100 height is going to be 5,000. All right, guys, I know that was somewhat of a confusing topic, or it could be, especially if you're new to programming. So don't hesitate to put your comments down in the comment section. I'd be happy to answer them. Um, and, and any questions that you have, I'd be happy to answer them as well. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. And if you did, then please click the like and subscribe buttons. It really means a lot to me. And I'll see you in the very next episode.